Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go ahead and create a route that's going to sign up our users. So we created our database in the last video and our database has the user table and as well as our order table. So in this video we're going to go ahead and create a route that's going to create user accounts. So before we do this, we're going to go ahead and create a schema that's going to help us to validate the data that we're going to pass into the API while creating a new user. So we're going to do this using Pydantic, which is a tool that helps us to validate data that we pass into one API. So think, think of it as a serializer. For example, you can be able to pass data to the serializer and then it validates the data that we pass in and then helps the API to process that data and then return responses. We're going to be able to do this with Pydantic and type hinting. We're going to create a new file uh, right here. And this new file is going to be a schemas.py. So this schemas.py file is going to help us to uh, create the, to have the schemas that are going to help us to, va to validate the different data that we're going to give to the API. And it's also going to help us to return our responses from our API. So I'm going to come right here and say from. So we're going to use our Pydantic. So I'm going to say from Pydantic, we are going to import the Base model class. And then the base model class is going to help us to create these classes. They're going to help us to validate our data. So to do that, I'm going to create our first class. And our first class is going to be a sign up class. So let's call this sign up model. So this sign up model is going to inherit from base model. And then right here, I'm going to specify the different fields. So these fields are going to be similar to those that we created with our model of the user. So we need to go to our models.py. And then I'm going to copy the fields specific to our user. I'm going to keep this in our schema. And then what I'm going to do is to actually uh, dictate the different types since we're going to use type painting uh, of the fields that we're going to use. So uh, the first one is going to be an ID. So this ID is going to be an optional field. Why? Because we shall not be required to create a user with an ID. So we need to import uh, the optional type from uh, typing. So we need to say from typing, we need to import uh, optional. And we need to come and say that an ID is going to be an optional integer. So I'll do the same for the username. So our, name, our username is going to be a string. Our email will also be a string. So it's a string. So I also do the same thing for our email. So our email is going to be a string. So it's going to be a string. So our password will also be a string. So we need to remove this. Then this will be a string. So this stuff will be an optional boolean since we shall not be required to state it when signing up a user. And then we shall set it when we want a user to actually be a staff user. So I'll be to actually come and say uh, his staff is going to be a boolean, but it's also going to be an optional boolean. So I'm going to come right here, and what I'm going to do is to also come and specify this field for is active. This is also going to be an optional boolean. So after doing this, uh, I'm going to configure our model to work with our ORM. Now our ORM in this case is going to be SQL Alchemy. So we use the table uh, user to create a new user. So what we're going to do is to attach this user table to our validation schema. So to do that, I'm going to create a simple class that's going to allow us to configure our model to work with our ORM. So what I'm going to come and do is to add a simple class. So this class is going to be big. And then I'll come and specify ORM mod. And then this is going to be equal to true. The next thing I will consider is going to be the schema extra a variable. So the schema extra variable allows us to dictate which data we may we may input or to guide our users who are going to use our first API, for example, our front end developers, into what to do on our Swagger UI. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll provide the schema uh, extra. Uh, and this is going to be a dictionary. So it's going to contain 
an example. So an example is going to be an object simply uh, demonstrating how the different fields that you're going to pass in. So in this case, when signing up a user, we're going to require a username. So let's provide a username. So in this case, we can say username is going to be John Doe. And then we can provide an email, for example, uh, John at gmail dot com. And then we can also go ahead and provide a password. So I'm going to provide a password. And then this password will be password. So we can also go ahead and specify the staff. So we can say it's staff. So let's say it's staff. Let's say it's going to be a post, uh, or initially false. And then we can also specify is uh, active. So in this case, let's say it's active is going to be true and then save. So after doing this, uh, we created a schema that's going to allow us to validate our sign up data. Let's go ahead and create uh, a new user. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to go to our auth routes. And within our auth routes, we're going to be able to create a user by creating a route that adds a user to our database. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we shall need is our session object that we created within our database.py. So when you go to our database.py, created our session object, as well as our engine that's going to help us to create, read, update, and delete from our database. So let's go ahead and go to our auth routes and import those two variables. So I'll say, this is going to be databases. We are going to, actually, this is going to be database. I'm going to import. So I'm going to import the session class. And I'm going to also import uh, our engine. So within our database.py, we created a session, which is a class that's going to help us to create sessions that going to help us to create, read, and update our data. So we shall need to just create an instance of this session. So I'll say session is going to be equal to our session. And then this session is going to bind to our engine. So I'll say bind is equal to engine. As it's going to map it to the database that we specified. Uh, which is our Postgres database right here. So now after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and implement the route that signs up a user. So what I'll do is to first uh, declare the route. So it's going to be at both router dot host, then it's going to be slash sign up. So uh, we expect that this route is going to be a slash or slash sign up. So I'll create the async function. So this is going to be uh, async dev, so this will be sign up, and then since we've created our model, we are going to import it. So we need to import our validation model. So I'm going to say from schemas, we need to go ahead and import a sign up model, and then after importing our sign up model, I'm simply going to come right in here and specify that the data we shall need to pass within this view function is going to be data of type user and then this user is going to be uh, an object of sign up of the type sign up model. So the way we need to create our user is we're going to first check if this user exists and then we can HTTP REST exceptions in this in case a user with this our credentials exists. For example, we have a models that show that a username and an email should be unique. So if I open that models.py, you can now see that a username and an email are two unique fields. So you need to go to earthrights.py. The first thing we're going to do is to check if a user exists within our database. So we need to import our model user. So we need to come and say from models, we to import user. And after doing this, I'm going to query for a user who has an email that's uh, <coughs> equivalent to that that we've submitted with our data. So I'll do is to come right here and say uh, db email. So I'll create this variable called db email, which is going to be equal to uh, session dot query. And then right here, we shall pass in the model that you want to query. So our model is going to be user. Then we're going to filter. Uh, 
the user with an email equal to the email of that user. So what we're going to do is to say user dot email is going to be equal to user dot email. Then we shall specify dot first because we need the first object returned with such an email. After we do that, if this is not now, that's when if it exists, we are going to basically return uh, an exception. So to do that, I'll say if eb email is not done, uh, what you're going to actually come and do is return an HTTP exception. Let's say return, and I'm going to import the HTTP exception from past API. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to import after I'll say from past API. I'm going to import HTTP. Actually, this will be from first API exceptions. We need to import the HTTP exception class. So after doing this, I'm going to come and simply return an HTTP exception. This is going to be HTTP exception, and then it's going to have a status code. So we need to also put in the status code. So in this case, we want to return a status code of uh, HTTP 400. That's a bad request when someone exists with that email. So what I'll do is import status from first API. So I'm going to come and specify that our status code is going to be status. Dot uh, HTTP uh, 400, then this will be right. First, so now we shall also give a detail. So I'll say uh, our detail is going to be equal to. So in this case, what we're going to say is uh, user uh, with uh, the email already exists. So after doing this, we are going to come and uh, do the same thing for the username. So to do that, I'm simply going to come and copy the same logic and simply going to uh, fix the indentation. And after we're done, so this is going to be for our username. So I'll come and change this to be for our username. So we need to come and say it's going to be a username. So right now we're querying for our user with this username. And then if it exists, we want to tell that a user with a username already exists. So after doing this, we are going to go ahead and create a new user. So after checking for this, if the user is valid, we're going to go ahead and check. So right here, we have already an error. So this is supposed to be a, a, a comparison. So we're going to actually add that. I'm going to come right here. So. After doing this, we're going to simply create a new user object that we're going to store in our database. We need to create a new variable called user. And this new user is going to be an instance of our user class. So this user is going to have a username or to the username that we provide within our model. So this will be user dot username. Then the email of this user will be equal to user dot email. So we shall do the same thing for the password. So we are not going to uh, <coughs> hash our password by our own. What we're going to do is to use Workzoop. So we're going to install Workzoop. I need to say it's going to be a password. And then we need to pull up a terminal and stop the server. So let's see, say pip install Workzoop. I mean to stop this. I made a mistake with spelling. This is going to be pip. Sorry for this. Install Workzoop. So I see that I already have the requirement satisfied. All right. So I'm going to import uh, two methods from Workzoop. 
are going to import uh, generate password hash and check password hash. So this method helps us to uh, hash our password and then check if our password hash matches the password we shall provide when we logging in. What I'm going to do is to come uh, right here and what I'll do is to say from workzook uh, dot this is going to be the security module. We are going to import uh, generate password hash. Then we're going to import uh, check password hash. After doing this, I'm going to simply come and what I'm going to do is to generate the password hash. For the password that you shall provide. So this is going to be the password. <clears throat> now, after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and also provide the is staff and the is active fields. So I'll say is active going to be equal to user is active. I'll do the same thing for our uh, is staff. So I'll do staff equal to so this is going to be staff equals to user what is staff so right now after doing this we're going to add this user to our session and then commit the session so to do that i'll just simply come right here i'll say session what add so we're going to add a new user then i'll say a session what commit after doing this, I'm going to simply come and what we're going to do is return our new user. So I'll just simply come and say return new user. So I'll come and also specify that you want this user returned uh, as a result of passing them through our user model. So what I'll come and do is find an argument. So this argument after the route is going to be response model. I'll specify that our response model is going to be assigned now. Model. Also specify the status code that you want to return. So we need to put this on a new line. So I'll say that the status code is going to be equal to uh, it's going to be status what HTTP 201. This will be created. So after doing this, I'm going to save and hoping that everything is working. I'm going to save. And we're going to run our server again. So our server is running at localhost 8000 and it has started up. So when I go to our Swagger UI and refresh, I now see that we're having our sign up route. So when I try to submit this, we have a username. So for example, we use our schema extra uh, variable. So right now it shows us which fields that we want to fill in. So for example, let's try to create a user with uh, John Doe, who is not a staff user. So if I say execute. So right now we see that the user has been created with a status code of 201 created. So in this video, we've been able to see how to create a new user. So let's try to also actually go ahead and execute the same to see if they validations are going to work. So when you try to sign up the new user again, now see an internal server error. So let's try to fix that. So right here, I have a response password a field required. So what we actually did is to return a new user. So let's try to see. So for example, point back to our <coughs> to our uh, function. So right here, we have a response model. So let's see. So we have a validation error. We have three validations. So right here, our response does not have a username, an email, and a password. This is because we we specified our response model as our sign up model. So I remove that response model and saved. So let's try to execute this again. So right now we see that our status code is 400. Our user has been created. So in this video, we've been able to see how to create our user. And we've also added some uh, validations to check if the user exists and if the user does not exist. 
Thank you for watching, guys. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a like, uh, comment, and share with me what you feel about this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you're into content like this. Thank you, guys, for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.